Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video and today I'm going to show you guys how to use the mixer brush to get rid of wrinkles. So recently I did this photo shoot as you can see on my screen and if you if you notice on the ground the sheet I was actually using is crushed and there's a neat little trick that you can actually do. Uh, it's not really a trick but I mean you can just use a mixer brush to get rid of all the wrinkles that you're basically seeing in the uh, sheet or on the sheet right there so i'm going to do a quick research of the image and then i'm going to go right ahead and show you guys how to get rid of the wrinkles showing on the sheet there all right so let's get right to it so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to crop this image i'm going to crop this to four to five ratio so basically i'm just going to click on the crop tool and then i'm just going to select um four to five ratio which is eight by ten and you must be wondering why I have um, just a small amount of items on my toolbar. Well, uh, recently I've removed most of them that I'm not using because I don't really need to have them there. And if you'd like to remove them as well and just use the ones that you want to use, you just click right here. And then you can click on edit and you can just drag them over to this side, the ones that you're not using. All right. So that's what I did. All right. <laughs> Good. So yeah, I'm going to crop this image. Let me go back and crop and just bring this down like this. Um, I don't like the fact that it's cropping everything. It is cropping it too close. So I'm just going to create an, a duplicate. So I'm going to just right click, click duplicate put that there, put this back up here. And then I'm just going to crop this. So this is the original image. No, sorry. I'm going to crop this one, the original image. And then the one that I have duplicated, I'm just going to go on the move tool. I'm just going to click and drag it over to the new one. Then it's now on it. So the first one is the one I'll be working on. The second one is just a crop um, layer. So now I'm just going to resize it. So control T and just bring it down like this just like that good and then I am just going to make a selection I'm gonna to come to the marquee tool right here the rectangle marquee tool I'm just gonna make a selection then I'm gonna press Control T and just drag it I'm holding on and shift and I just drag it just press enter I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side so all I'm doing I am just making a selection of the top layer and just drag it out because it's white Control T bring it in you will not notice that I'm actually doing I'm actually stretching it all right good okay so I think I'm okay with that good so the next thing I'm gonna do now I'm gonna work on the model skin real quick I'm just gonna remove all the blemishes that I need to remove I'm gonna press J on the keyboard for the patch tool and I'm just going to remove all these blemishes here real quick all right just remove the ones that I don't want. Then remove this, this, this. All right. Just gonna move this loose here from her face as well. That one works. So you remove all the blemishes using. I'm not sure what tools you well. I like to use the clone stamp tool. Um, well, not the clone stamp tool. I like to use the patch tool to remove blemishes loose here and stuff like that. But not all the time I'll use that tool. There are times when the spot eating brush tool works better or the stamp um, clone stamp tool works better. So it all depends on what. Uh, tool works for you all right so I think I'm okay with that I'm gonna come down to the chest there's not much I need to remove that looks good I'm gonna come down to her hand to remove some of these veins from the hand then her knee all right everything else looks fine maybe right here perfect so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean up the background as well. Yeah, I need to repaint my wall. <laughs> yes, I wasn't using a, a backdrop for the wall. It was just, 
well, I was using the wall as the backdrop, basically. All right, so I'm just cleaning up the wall. I normally tell models not to touch the wall when they come in because, you know, white is very easy to, to get dirt. Or it basically shows dirt, so, you know. So all I'm doing, I'm now trying to blend the background by just making a selection for the background and also the cloth on the ground. Yeah, so that is it basically. So now we have, it's now flushed. All right, good. So guys, you don't necessarily have to worry about not having a, a paper come right down on the ground. If you have sheet, just use your sheet. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is frequency separation. So I'm gonna come up to the top here. I'm gonna click the frequency separation action. You can find the frequency separation action by checking the link in the description. It takes you right to my website and you can download the action from there. For the uh, Gaussian blur, I'm gonna keep that at 6.4. And then I'm gonna go down here to the low um, layer. All right, good. So I'm going to uh, go to the mixer brush. As you notice on my screen, the mixer brush is taken out. So it's easier for me to make a selection for the mixer brush. All right, so for the wet, it's gonna be at 6.2 uh, because I noticed that having it at 6.2, not 6.2, 62%, it gives you a faster touch to the image. <laughs> All right, so let me show you. So it's now at 6. Point, uh, it's, at, it's at 62%. I'm gonna show you what it does at that amount, so. Let me do this, get it a bit bigger. So I'll just go up like that and I'm basically done. That's it. So what I'm doing basically is to taking it from the bright area or mixing from the bright area or the dark area. So I don't mix them together. So that looks good. Perfect. I'm going to come here and do the same thing. Not all image, the 62% actually works. And you know how I found this out where I can just do it just one click or one brush and it just gets everything flattened in one go. I was actually working on the background, working on this. And I noticed that it flattens the image real quick. And I just figured that, you know what, I'm going to try that as well. So, yeah, so all I'm doing right now is just to brush it. And remember, using the mixer brush, it flattens the image. So you have to be careful how much you add and how big your brush is. And as you know, you can always use, well, if you've been watching my videos, you can always use the dodge and burn to basically shape back the face or give it a dimension good so let's look at the before and after so before oh wait i'm not going to do a before and after with that i'm just going to show you the before and after for the frequency separation so let me just zoom this up so that's the before that's the after before after so that's the fastest i've ever done a retouch if i was if it was actually at two percent i will be doing more um brushing in order to get it to where i want it to be so yeah that's a nice little trick as well all right so i'm gonna make some more i'm gonna clean up the background a bit more because i realize that we still have some dirt on the wall so i'm gonna Control shift alt e to create a new layer Control j to duplicate it and then i'm just going to use the patch tool i'm just gonna make a selection and just go to a clean area or pull it to a clean area so I'm all zoomed in now because I want to see all the sections that has dirt on the wall. I think I need to paint my wall pretty soon. Um, yeah, I need to. But it takes so much time, which is why I think I may just buy one of those um, one of those paper for the background. And what I'll do so i don't really because all right, the thing about it the reason why i don't want to buy any paper for my backdrops is because i would have to tear it off each time because um it gets dirty and i can't be using the dirty part portion each time so i would always have to be cutting it 
So what I think I would do is to um, use the pull the, the uh, paper right down to the ground right here and then use something else on the ground, maybe like a, a, a sheet like this. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, that's not going to work. Good. All right. So now for the fun part to get rid of the wrinkles from the sheet. So I'm just going to do frequent separation again. And I'm going to go to the mixer brush. I'm still at 62%, right? And I'm just going to do this. Get my brush bigger by using the bracket on the keyboard. And I'm just going to brush like this. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, you know what? I just remember that my frequent separation action gives a lot of problems sometimes if I don't do it a particular way. So let me go back. All right. So if you're using my frequent separation um, action and you notice that you, you're you having this error where it is not working or anything, what you have to do is to either go down here to the background and then create the um, frequent separation action or you just delete the frequent separation action that you've used before. So I'm just going to bring this up to the top. Control shift right bracket to bring it up to the top. So as again, again, you have that option. You can just delete the old one that you were using before because you've already created, created a layer and you're comfortable with what you've done before. So you can delete the old one or you could just go down to the background, click frequent separation, and then it goes back up to the top. Well, you have to bring it to the top. All right. So I'm going to click right here for the new one. And then I'm just going to brush now. So 62% for the wet and I'm on the mixer brush. So look at this. Look at this, guys. See that? It's all flattened. Perfect. So just like that. I'm just going to come over here and do this side as well. I think I went too much on this side. I get to get my brush a little bit smaller. And then just brush. So all the wrinkles are now gone. And trust me, this feels, it's so satisfying to do this. I would do it for the entire day. Because <laughs> I just like the fact that it's, it's disappearing. I'm going to get my brush a little bit smaller and go in. Oh, sorry, I need to bring... And if you, if you notice that a section of the image is dark and you want to mix it in, you, you try to take it from the light area over to the dark area and not try to just brush the dark area. Try to bring it over. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to go any further with that one. All right, good. So I am done with removing, well, not removing, but flattening the wrinkles. So like that. Good. All right, so now that I've flattened the wrinkles, what you can do now, you can go to the high frequency layer and you can get your patch tool or any other tool that you can use to remove stuff. And then what I can do just to remove the lines. So all I'm doing, I'm bringing, I'm bringing it up to the top where the white background is solid. So yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm sure a lot of people are not going to zoom up on your images on Instagram or wherever you're going to be uploading it. So all I'm doing now is just to drag it up to a clean portion to get rid of the other wrinkles that are still showing, are crushed, that are showing on the ground. All right, I think that is it. So I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. We could go in a little bit um, closer and try to get rid of more some of the others so you have to take your time and just do this most people think that doing retouching um it should be a quick editing process but trust me it takes time if you want your image to look good you have to take time to make your adjustments. See, the socks it has a little dirt on it. All right. Good. So I am done. I, I, I mean, I mean, there I could still neat and find this. I could still come here and do some more. 
and as usual guys i don't want this to be a long video i have already edited this image um let me show you uh where is it where is it where is it good so this is the edited image let me just go to the rated one so this is the edited image i've already edited the image so you guys oh i didn't even clean up right here <laughs> but that's fine um yeah so i think i didn't in this one as well yeah but yeah that's that's the image i'm going to do some color grading now real quick so the color grading process is really really easy i'm going to create a new layer Control alt shift e to create a new layer Control j to duplicate it because we don't want to work on the layer that we have created we want a new layer to work on in case we need to delete it and do something else we're going to come here to filter go to camera raw and i'll be using my preset that i've created for camera raw you can download this preset by using the link in the description <laughs> all right so once you download the preset all you have to do now is to come right here where the three dots are and click this click the three dots and then go to load settings and um our load preset and you select the preset that you want to use i'm going to copy this because i'm going to select this one i'm going to press ok and after you've applied the preset in order to save it or in order for you to save the preset here what you have to do like under here you have to now come to preset and then save settings save and you want to name it whatever you want it to be and you save it good so we don't want to use this preset so what we can do is just close this and we can go back in again because we have saved the preset so we can always go back there so yeah this is the one or uh, you don't necessarily have to come off the preset you don't have to close you can just come back you can just click the one that you want to use all right so um yeah so you click the preset and then we can make some adjustment by going to edit uh, i noticed that her skin does not look natural so right here where it says color you can go to orange and you can just lower the opacity for the orange or lower the saturation all right and then you can come down here to collaboration and you can just adjust the blue in shadows or blue primary blue let me just show you the before and after so you guys can see what's happening all right and then we can come back up here to the shadows and we can just bring up the shadows a little bit like that uh, we can play with the dehaze a little bit as well. Let's bring it in and see what it looks like. No, I don't like that. So I'm going to undo that. We can play with the highlights. If we want the image to be a little bit whiter. That looks good. And then contrast a little bit uh, like that. Good. Then we can press OK. Good. So let's look at the before and after now. Let me just put everything in a group. Um well to right here group so that's the before and that is the after before and after and we could still go in and make some more adjustment because once you add color then we can even remove this and we can go up closer and make some adjustments to that so once you add color to the image there are times but well, depends on what image or what background you're working with there are times it will show some different sections that may have dirt or something and you may have to clean it up again after you've applied the preset to it so yeah the preset is not just something that you just click and everything is good you have to make adjustments to it so if you like this video and you learned anything from this video like guys give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed to this channel and turn on notification bell and ensure that you follow me on instagram